Well, that's not going to work. How am I going to get air into there? The part that I'm going to make is a two-sided part. And one of the things I wanted to do is to have a chamfer on the front and the back. And the chamfer on the back is going to be a very small chamfer. The challenge whenever you do that is if it's misaligned even by a tiny amount, it's quite obvious. So what I wanted to do is to see if I could use a technique that's new to me using my probe to see if I could get that alignment really, really precise so you couldn't see the difference. This is a cylinder on my Arberg C4B injection molding machine that I'm bringing back to life. This is the 60-year-old machine. And you can see that it has a port here to basically push the cylinder one way which is to open the clamp and then push the cylinder the other way to close the clamp. Now, the way all of that worked originally is with this right here. This is a solenoid pneumatic valve and, you know, as you can see, it's ancient. And I thought about just using this again, but there are a few issues with this. The main issue is that this has some wear parts, so it has to be serviced fairly often. Modern pneumatic valves do not have that issue. But you can see that it had some screws that went into these holes there, and then it had the port there, which goes into there. And then it had uh, input, outputs, etc. So what I want to do instead, as I mentioned, is switch to modern hardware, which means I want to use one of these. And that means I need an NPT port here. Now, there are two ways I could do this. One is I could disassemble all of this and then drill this out to be a larger hole and then tap it for NPT. But that's a lot of work and I really don't want to disassemble the cylinder. The other thing is I can make a manifold similar to what was there before, which is what I decide to do. So the manifold will be a block of aluminum that fits onto here and then this will screw into it and that's all I need to do. The design is not that complicated. As you can see, I have the port here for the NPT threaded fitting, and then I have some recessed holes for the M6 screws that will hold it in place. It is, however, a two-sided design, and that's because on the back, I have a slot for an O-ring, and the O-ring is what will help provide a better seal. The other thing is, you can see that this diameter is different from this diameter. I have a relief back here to make it easier for me to tap this NPT. If I had to tap all the way down, it would require a lot more force. So I only have this going down as far as it really needs to. Now when it comes to the cam, I decided to try something I hadn't done before, which is, let me start with this setup here. You can see I have the bottom left based on the location of the stock. So I have the stock set to be larger. What I'm going to do is mill it down to a little bit below the bottom. This will result in a what's known as a hat. And let me show you here. So it'll result in this hat here. And then when I flip it over, like so, the first thing that I want to do is mill off the hat. Now, one of the things that's interesting is because I'm putting a chamfer on the back as well. I want to make sure that the front and the back are perfectly aligned. This is where I decide to have some fun with the probe, now that I have a probe. So the first thing is, you can see here, I have this set up so that it probes the back left corner. Now the cool thing about that, as you can see here, is I need to move the probe so it's close to the XY0 position and then set the X and Y offset to zero. I can start the cycle, and when I start the cycle, it'll actually probe this position and this position, as you can see here. That set the X and Y zero offsets for G55, which is what I'm using for the first operation on the Piranha Jaws. So the way I've set this up is by setting the work offset of this setup. That will impact all of the operations underneath that setup. And so here, a value of 0 or 1 refers to G54. Setting it to 2, therefore, uses the next one, which is G55. And then the probe, the way that's set up is I have it this face and this face of the stock selected. So that means it's going to probe the stock and then set the XY0 position to be that corner, which is exactly what I want. As always, I start with the tri to take a thin cut, which produces a really nice surface finish. 
Next is the roughing operation with a 3 8 inch end mill. And I frequently get asked why I'm not taking a more aggressive cut. And that's because this is actually a pretty small machine. It's an ISO 20 taper, which is far smaller than what people are used to. And the manual actually recommends no more than about 20% width of cut and 20% depth of cut. One of them can be slightly larger for this diameter end mill running at 10,000 RPM on aluminum. So that's what I'm running. Then a 2D contour to clean up the faces. For holes that I'm going to bore, I like to start by spot drilling and then using a drill to drill all the way through to the full depth. And that way when I come back with the end mill, uh, it does have a little bit of relief and that helps with the cutting a little bit. And then finally a chamfer, I think about five thousandths of all of the edges. So at this point, the first side is finished and you can see the hat is there. And what I'm doing is I'm cleaning it off and I'm being careful to keep the orientation so that I flip it over end to end. Now, it's not important for this piece because it's symmetric, but it's a practice that I like to use so that when I pick up the next corner, I'm going to pick it up from the exact same position that I used from the first side, which on the first side was on the left, is now on the right. So I give it a whack to make sure it's all the way down on the parallels. And then I bring in the probe to get it so that it looks like it's about in the right position. And once I have it in the right position, I set the X0 and XY for G54. So this is basically what we did, which is in the pre first operation I had the zero point down here. And then what I did is I flipped it over like so. You can see this is where the zero point would have been if I moved it. So in the next setup, you can see I moved the zero point to right there. Now for this to work correctly, I need to have the stock size the same between these two. Uh, they move up and down a little bit, which is fine because what I have here is there's a little bit of stock that I need to remove and it's actually from this side and then when I flip it over that stock has been removed so now the stock bottom is the same as the bottom of the part. That means when I probe what I want to do is again pick up the two positions of the stock and then that will give me basically the ability to mill the hat off and that doesn't have to be that accurate because what I'm going to do in the next operation is do another probe which you'll see soon. I press cycle start so here it's doing the first step of the second operation which is the probing of the right and the back side and as I mentioned it doesn't have to be precise. Then using the same roughing end mill which is my 3 8 inch diameter end mill to slowly remove the hat. And when it gets down to the last layer, as you can see here, then it will start to expose the holes, as you can see here, which is a good thing because it means it worked correctly. And then finally, the tri-fly to give it a nice, clean surface. Now this is where things get interesting. In the second operation, we had G54, this position here. So that means the machine knows exactly where that location is. For the next milling operation, we want to precisely pick up this face here as well as the back face here. So I'm going to turn things around a little bit so we can see those two faces. For this to work, that means we can't just probe this right away because we have to have this setup use the same position for G54. So if I switch between them, you can see that they're exactly the same. And I did that by setting the X and Y dimensions of the stock to be the same between these two and just change the height. When we go to the probe, okay, it's a little hard to see, but if I click on edit, it's easier to see. I've picked up these two faces here. And so then it's going to pick those two faces and then update the G54 position. And what that means is we should get a very precise matchup between the top and the bottom when we do this. And where that will become most evident is here where we're doing the chamfer. If we look at how much chamfer I have on the outside, you can see it's just a 5,000th chamfer. And so that means if I have any mismatch between the top and the bottom, when I perform this operation, it'll become obvious with the chamfer. As the probe is coming down, it's coming down relative to the previous G54, and then as it probes here, it's going to update G54 to be the exact coordinates of those two faces. 
And then boring the main hole from the back, this is to provide the relief to make it easier to thread. And then boring the screw holes from the back as well. Then a 2D contour to provide a nice smooth surface. I've switched to a much smaller end mill and this is cutting the slot for the o-ring that will provide the seal between this and the actual machine. And then again doing a 2D contour to make sure that the surface is nice and clean. This is adding the chamfer around the outside and if there was a mismatch between the front and the back you would definitely see it in this chamfer. But from the sound it sounded the same on all corners which is a good indication. That turned out really well. I threaded this uh, off camera and you can see that uh, the chamfer is even all the way around so I'm really really pleased with how that turned out. I mean I cannot see visually any difference and considering how small that chamfer is that's a pretty good indication that this turned out really really accurate. Now this is not the first one I made. I made this one and here you can see the chamfer is really strong on this side and missing on this side. What, and if you look down here as well, you can also see that the two bores are not aligned. So what happened with this one is I didn't have the stock size set correctly. And so the coordinate system that I was using as a starting point wasn't quite accurate. It took me a while to figure out what was going on and I had to watch the video, which you can see here, of it actually probing. And you can clearly see in the video that it's not probing in the correct position. So it didn't actually touch both of the faces it should have touched. This is the O-ring that I designed to fit on here, and you can see it uh, fits nicely. Uh, it's uh, slight, it requires a very slight amount of um, stretch, but that helps keep it in place so it doesn't fall off when I'm putting it on the machine. I'd like to thank my latest patron, name below. I really appreciate uh, the support that you provide. I'm really pleased with how this uh, project turned out. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've used the probe this way and I'm really liking how it's working. Now some of you may have noticed that it's, well I'm sure you noticed, it's a pretty small probe. The reason it's such a small probe, it's a one millimeter tip diameter probe, is because I purchased this for use on the watch project. Uh, what I'm planning to do is to measure the diameter of the opening for the gasket and if required It'll compensate you know, with some wear and make it the right diameter. So that's why I brought the probe. The one that comes with it, the six millimeter probe, is just too large in diameter. I'd probably prefer to use like a two millimeter diameter probe for normal use. And I may order one, but right now I either have the six millimeter or the one millimeter probe. So I'm going to install the manifold in another episode. Uh, this one is just about making the manifold. Uh, so I'll be getting back to getting the Arberg up and running very soon. And as I promised, I'm also gonna make a video that's the in-depth about how I'm doing the touchscreen. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing, commenting below, give me a thumbs up. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.